Young Greatness, thank you for joining us. What's up? How you been? I've been great. So it's been crazy now. You know, you have a popping song. Yeah. How does that feel like? I want some more popping songs. <laughs> <laughs> what's, I mean, what's next after Moolah? Oh, well, you know, I just released, I tried to tell them too. It came out July 8th. Um, I have a lot of bangers on that mixtape. I'm getting ready to drop two more mixtapes. So I'm excited, you know, just to be able to put out good music mm -hmm. and deliver good content to the fans. Were you shocked at, like, the song just going big? Yeah, I mean, I was shocked that the song went big um, after we pushed it for so long. Cause you know we was up in the air about it, but I always knew I had you know the potential to make great music. I always did. I always was good at making music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just the just a matter of getting it to the fans, to the people. Mm -hmm. So you know, um, I'm excited about it. Yeah. So what was the process of making the song? It took ten minutes. Really? <laughs> yeah. Jazzy Faye came to the studio. He played like a couple beats, but the Moolah beat was stuck in my head. So I went back to it and just boom, boom. Knocked it out right then and there. Nice. Good vibes, you know, vibing with Jazz for you always, you know, in some kind of character when you're in the studio with him. But how did you get in touch with Jazzy Faye? Well, you know, he always was a fan of my music, even prior to me doing my deal with Quality Control. He was always like a fan of me, you heard me? So once I, I got a home base, you know what I'm saying? He was ready to work. He was one of the first producers. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as the beat, he just threw the beat at you. Yeah. You were just like, all right, let's see what we can make it. Yeah. Ten minutes. Damn. Yeah. Well, um, now, you grew up in New Orleans, right? Yep, New Orleans. Tell me about your upbringing. I mean, my upbringing wasn't no different from any other rapper. You know, um, I mean, I can't speak on their lives, but it wasn't no fabrication with my life. You know what I'm saying? Just being from New Orleans, from the Seven Wall, St. Bernard Project. I mean, I was faced with a lot of adversities, but I think that's the that's what made me, that's what made my story, you know, raw. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And my content, you know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't trade that for the world. You know, my experiences and some of the things I went through, mm -hmm. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah. So aside from rapping, you also played football, right? Yeah, I'm a sports fanatic. <laughs> you gave up a scholarship? Yeah, well, actually, I ain't gonna say I gave it up. I'm gonna just say that things didn't work out in my favor. You know what I'm saying? You know, you be throw, you know, sometimes in life we we was uh we get throw curveballs. And I think I was a victim of a curveball. What was the but, what's the curveball? Like I said, versus this my father passed away mm -hmm. and my mom had breast cancer. You know, but it's still, you know, rap is my new sport. So my same aggression and passion I had on the field, I just put that over to music. Yeah. So, um, how did you start rapping? Um, I used to be just the dude that hung out in the studio with the other rappers. You know what I'm saying? I, I, wasn't, um, I wasn't a rapper, of course, like I told you, but I used to hang out in the studio with all the rappers in our city, including you know one of my best friends. It was Deuce, uh, KK, who was with 50, The Squad, who was with Wayne, uh, Magnolia Chop, a bunch of artists that's from New Orleans. We used to all share the same studio. And just being there, seeing them being creative, and we was all so young and talented and hungry, um, it just rubbed off on me. So I started rapping and hum, and you know humming words and melodies and stuff like that. And next thing you know, um, you got young greatness. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, how often do you go back home? I live there. You live, still there? Yes. And we did a um, interview with Boosie not too long ago, and. He, you know, he's from Baton Rouge, of course, but he talked about... Wherever you from, you will get hated the most. You know, most rappers die in their own city, man. It's a fact. And, um, you know, you have haters who, who was in school with you and, and they mad because they was, on, they was in, that, in that third grade class with you, but they don't have the same hustle as you. You know, they hate you for no reason. They hate you for, they hate you for your success. If you was a local rapper and you, and you didn't have much, they would love you, you know? And these people, you develop hatred in your own city. You know, if you go to, you go to Canada, you go to New York, you from Louisiana, you don't have hate, you don't have people want to hurt you because they don't know you. I also live in Atlanta, mm -hmm. but I look at it like, um, anywhere you go at, it's going to be some drama, it's going to be hate. 
but there ain't gonna be no hate like you know the the city where you're from. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm faced with it every day. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta, you know, I just keep on moving. I just keep working. I give them some more, some more stuff to hate about. I'm just being real with you. Yeah. You know, I don't really give a fuck about that. You know, they're gonna talk, they're gonna say whatever they wanna say. You know what I'm saying? You know, you just have to keep the real genuine people around you and keep some savages around you because if they get on some savage shit, you just gotta be ready to get back on some savage shit with them. You know what I'm saying? I just was raised like that. You shouldn't feel no man but God. And you know what I'm saying? I'm not letting nobody, you know, run me from, you know, my, you know, my family. And my family's in New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, I'm not a dummy. And you know, I'm not ignorant. But if I have to go see my kids, and I have to go see my auntie, or I have to go see my grandmother or my mother, that's what I'm gonna do. I don't care what, who's saying what, or who's saying they're gonna do what. Well, I'm gonna have to die going out brave. And that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. Before I let somebody make me, you know what I'm saying, uh, change how I'm living. It ain't happening like that. Mm -hmm. That's just what it is. Do you think a lot of people around you have changed since you've become so successful? I mean, I would say some, some people that was around me and in my immediate circle, you know, some of them did some shady shit, but it's expected, it's cliche. You know what I'm saying? That always happened with every, every, uh, when every person that becomes a star, you know, just not in music, you know, people go to getting, just doing weird shit mm -hmm. and disloyal shit. And that's when you really find out, you know what I'm saying, who had ulterior motives and who's genuine your friend. See, if you don't love Teddy, I don't want you around me, period. It have nothing to do with young greatness. You have to love me. If you don't love me and care for me, I don't want you around me. You could be the highest of the highest. Mm -hmm. I take my chances with the person who just care about me and who don't care about if I rap or not. And that's the only people that's around me right now, period. Um, you've, you've been on your grind pretty much for over a decade. Yeah. What made you continue to go on and pursue your career Pursue your dreams, I guess, versus to then give it up. I mean, it's been a lot of times where I wanted to say, you know, fuck the rap shit. Because to me, you know, a lot of this shit is fake. And I don't, I don't really like a lot of it, you know what I'm saying? But I'm so passionate about anything I put my hands on, you know. It's like once I say I'm going to do something, I have to do it. You know what I'm saying? So just my passion the city of New Orleans, and you know, my best friend that was murdered a couple of years ago who actually gave me this, you know, this gift I have to be young greatness. You know what I'm saying? Those, those kind of things and my family and the people that support me, that's what keep me, that's what make me wake up every morning and keep on going full speed, you know what I'm saying? Because you know how this go. Sometimes this shit get frustrating. Sometimes it get real political, but when you a real person, you know, that shit kind of bother you. But I didn't got to a point to where I just stay focused, man, and pray and get up every day and go even harder. Now, what did you go to prison for and how long were you gone for? Uh, I went to um, prison with a possession with intent to distribute, you know what I'm saying? Um, selling drugs. And um, I was in prison for two and a half years. And um, like I said, it was one of the most life changing experiences for me. You know, I was locked up in Gina, Louisiana, where the Gina 6 was. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to speak on that. You know how crazy that situation was, just being there around those kind of people. You know, especially with what's going on today with all the- How does that make you feel? I mean, to me, I feel good now because I ain't locked up no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, it, you know, being, under those, you know, uh, circumstances, only a real strong person could survive it if you're in strong mentally. Mm -hmm. To be called like racist names and you can't really do nothing about it because you're in prison. And nobody don't know you can handle it like this because you're in prison. You know what I'm saying? I was one of the people who had a job where I worked in the, in the real world, but I was treated like a slave. So, and I, you know, we was called like slave names like boy and nigga and stuff like that, but what nothing we could do about it because shit, we in jail. So it ain't like if we if we'd say, oh, he called me a boy or he called me a nigga, somebody was going to do something about it. 
shit, you put yourself in the situation. You know what I'm saying? So I just, you know, I hated it so much, so I was like, I'm not going to never give myself an opportunity, you know what I'm saying, for another man to talk to me like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm here. I mean, do you, do you feel that people use abuse their authority? I mean, even with the police officers now, um, a lot of the shootings and stuff like that. Of course. Yeah, they abuse their authority. I mean, a lot of stuff be unnecessary. You know what I'm saying? Um, you got to think. It's, it's, everybody know the consequences if you kill a police officer. If I was laying on, on my back and my gun in my pocket and they got two police officers on me, I'm not even going to even attempt to even reach at this gun. Because I know if I kill this man, I'm going to jail for the rest of my life. I'm probably going to get the death penalty from killing this man. They're going to put it all over the news. But he could kill me and it just be, you know, just like, it's just another, you know, another life lost. And another black man gone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have you ever been in some scary situations? Well, I mean, it's always scary in New Orleans, in Louisiana, period. You get pulled over, it's always that little, you know, that little feeling in your stomach like, man, I don't know what they're about to do me. You know what I'm saying? Because it's all, you know, it's, you know, dirty cops do live. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's always that. That one thing that just make you feel like, man, I know I'm straight, but this could go bad. If he says something to me I don't like, or if, you know, I say something back to him that he don't like, this could this could go bad. Mm-hmm. So I'm always thinking, you know, when I get pulled over, I try to be respectful as possible, you know, try to show no kind of force and give them total control. You know what I'm saying? Because I got kids to go back home to. Yeah, right? Yeah. Gucci's absolutely the boogeyman of hip hop. Like it's just certain individuals you just know that at any given moment it could go left. Right. Gucci's one of them. Ti's one of them. I told y'all that before. I don't know why y'all keep acting like Ti ain't Gucci level crazy. Or maybe <laughs> Ti Gucci, is Gucci, Gucci level crazy. Gucci might be Ti level crazy. You you mean to tell me that if I walked up to your mother right in front of you and shot her in the face? Yeah. And then I, I left the country, and you could never, you can't get to me. You Hell wouldn't no. tell the police. Hell no, nah, I'm, I'm a, I'm, where your mama stay at? 